Hi, my name's Allison Clark, and welcome to another episode of Cowbells and Conversations, Ideas That Ring. Today, I have two fabulous people with me. They started a show called Nine to Five to help candidates be more effective in interviews. So I thought I would bring them on today so we could get some insights about what you need to think about when you're interviewing to be more effective, more dynamic, and also more memorable. So please help me welcome Jim and Ringo to the show. Woo! Hey, hey. Good morning. Hey, thank you so much. Good morning, Allison. Thank you. Allison. thank you so much for having us on. Yes. Well, I saw your show and I just loved it because so many people don't really know what to do. You know, no one's ever taught. You don't go to like interview. Well, I guess there is some sort of interview class, but not really. Like, so to go behind the scenes to make people more successful, more confident. I just loved your ideas that you're giving to your candidates. So when we end this show, I just want people to get a couple ideas about what's really important when you interview, but then also once you're in the job, what's really important for them to remember to really stay engaged and also be awesome employees. So welcome. I'm going to have you both introduce <laughs> yeah. yourself and tell us um, you know, what your name is and then also how long you've been doing recruiting and then and then just kind of some fun facts about yourself. Jim, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I uh, thank you again, Allison, for uh, having us on. I'm, my name is Jim Krauskopf. I am uh, basically a headhunter uh, focusing primarily in the tech space. I've been doing this for 14 years now, and uh, we do a combination of executive search and as well as uh, senior level individual contributor roles. And our goal, Ringo and I, we started the channel nine to five. You can find us on Instagram and YouTube as well. And the, the purpose of that was to basically uh, give you some real talk and behind the scenes uh, tips and advice on how to be a better professional and, and candidate. And then I think the, the twist for, for us and our approach is that we're gonna be a little bit more uh, irreverent and, and tell you things that you normally wouldn't get from a recruiter or a hiring manager as well. So these are, these are gonna, it's gonna be a real uh, conversation around that. And, and uh, so our, my approach with a lot of candidates, especially nowadays, is to give them the tools that they need to stand out in the crowd because it's still very competitive out there. And uh, it, it also can be ch uh, challenging because of the uh, circumstances of having to do these calls and, and interviews uh, virtually as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, never meeting face-to-face -face now. Right, yeah. Yep. And then Ringa, tell us who you are. Good morning. Hello. Thank you so much again for having us, Allison. My name is Ringo. Uh, I work in the tech space and have for 20 years or so leading HR teams, uh, specifically recruiting, culture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I would say, you know, to add on to what Jim said around what we're trying to do, uh, I think a lot of people have talked to a lot of people. Uh, their friends and their relatives and their parents about trying to find a job. I think what makes us different is we have, for every hire that we have made, we've seen 10, 20 people get declined. We probably, dec we probably decline, unfortunately, 50 resumes. So we know what gets people declined. Yes, we've hired a bunch of people, but we know every little nuance because we're talking to the hiring managers, we're talking to people who are interviewing the candidate on the teams of, of what's literally getting them declined. And if you can eliminate those mistakes, you can get hired. I love that. So I love doing an exercise with some of my clients, like stop doing some things and start doing other things. So let's start with just like, what should people stop doing? So we're in this virtual space and I think, you know, there are so many jobs. So would you tell people to stop thinking there aren't jobs out there? <laughs> like there's a lot of jobs out there, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of jobs. And we actually, our most recent episode that we just uh, published was about, you know, why you shouldn't let your uh, foot off the gas when, uh, during the holidays. Uh, and uh, so you, you can get, in there, get into a little more details around that if you watch that episode. But the summary of that is you, even during the holidays, companies are still hiring and they're still conducting interviews. And it may, be, it may slow down a little bit, but, you know, the, don't give up on the notion that uh, you should just stop looking for a job because it, it is a constant... That's a second full-time job. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take it seriously and you do want to find your, your ideal job, you should be constantly uh, uh, maintaining your, your interview skills and reaching out, networking, 
and interviewing, et cetera. So I love that. So stop thinking you're going to wait till 2021 and start, <laughs> yeah. right? start finding jobs now. Okay, good. What's uh, number two thing to stop? Like, so stop the mindset that there aren't jobs because there are. And number two, what would you say? Like, what have you seen candidates? Because Ringo, I love like you're seeing so many things that have not worked. Like, what would you tell people not to do? So I think for myself, uh, this is happening right now and it happened at the last recession. A lot of people could not find jobs. And to your point, I actually think there are a lot of jobs available. What's happening is folks that were working for the past 10, 15 years in a specific job, or they haven't been working maybe because they've been working, uh, taking care of kids at home and now they want to return to work or, or um, they've been going to school and they haven't interviewed. The way people are being interviewed today is different than the way people were being interviewed 10, 15 years ago, right? With the internet, with online interviewing, with, with the, the video conference. And so we have to get out of that mindset of 10 to 15 years ago. Um, resumes look different. Literally, we see a resume, we can tell if, it, if it's somebody who hasn't worked or who has worked in the same role for 10, 15 years. And, and we're looking for modern resume layouts. We're looking for uh, you know, the, the jargon of today. So doing research, whether it's on YouTube or Google and just getting modern techniques of interviewing can go a long ways. Otherwise you're, you're, you're competing with your old technology in a, in, a, in a modern world. Great point. Yes, good. So stop doing old school resumes, start yeah. doing research and having more, because it really is your first impression. Yes. When you get a resume, it's like yes or no, correct? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, we can, tell, we can tell within 10 seconds. I mean, because, you know, I, I read probably at least 50 resumes or up to 200 a day. Oh and um, <laughs> it's, uh, and so, you know, in order to process that information, you know, Ringo and I, we get to the point where we got to be able to identify uh, whether to continue reading on uh, within five or 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important, you know, really quick tip on the resume side is that, you know, the first half of the real estate of your resume on your page needs to be very compelling in order to grab anyone's attention, whether it be a recruiter or a hiring manager, because if you're not engaging a pr prospective uh, a recruiter or a hiring manager within the first 10 or 15 seconds, you're done. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, it's easy to say, have a modern resume. I would say, one sign of a modern resume, and we won't decline somebody because they're doing what I'm about to say, but it's an immediate signal within the first two seconds of reading the resume, the top, to Jim's point, the top half of the first page of your resume, it should not have your physical address on it. In today's era, era we're not going to mail you anything via snail mail. We don't care where you live in today's era. <laughs> so if you have your physical address on there, it just tells Red us, flag. okay, you haven't look for a job in 10 years mm -hmm. and you're actually wasting mm -hmm. those lines that could be used, which showcase your accomplishments and your qualifications. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that real estate is valuable, number one. And two, it's also for privacy and security reasons as well. You never, you know, resumes are forwarded very easily through email mm -hmm. and you never know who you're going to encounter in your uh, job search that you may, you know, not, you wouldn't, probably not want them to have <laughs> exactly uh, yeah, information there. So. Right. And do you provide a coaching service for resumes or do you have resources? Like how would people besides watching YouTube's, I know you can get anything on YouTube. Like, do you have, do you partner with coaches or how would they help? How would you help them get their resumes someplace where it's actually awesome real estate? Oh, so, I, I refer uh, candidates. I, I, we don't, I personally, you know, my, my subject matter expertise is, uh, is headhunting. So I don't, I'll, I'll coach people on resumes, but if they want some detailed help, I'll just refer to some uh, professional resume writers. Okay. Again, so you have resources that people yeah. can reach out for. Okay. Awesome. I, I have a blog. It's called hrnasty.com, which talks a lot about this. And then I have a side gig. It's called career tracker.co and it's literally templates <sighs> created by yes. modern day recruiters that, We'll line up your resume, spell check it. And along the way, we explain why we're not putting our address in there, why you don't want your school at the very top of the resume, you want it at the end. So just these mm. model tips. Yeah, I, I highly that. recommend if you haven't checked out HR Nasty, uh, please do. I love that title. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it also, it's very entertaining, so. Right. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so let's just get a couple more tips for people. So make sure that we're changing mindset, we're changing our resume. And then what would you say the other top two areas to focus on to really be an effective candidate and stand out as you interview? Yeah. Uh, well, for me, the top two are going to be number one, know your brand. I think um, a lot of candidates go to market as a candidate without knowing who they are as a professional. Mm -hmm. And just like, uh, you know, lessons in life is like, if you don't know who you are and what you want, you're not going to get what you're looking for. So, um, and what I mean by that in regards to knowing your brand is like, what, what type of uh, sub subject matter expertise uh, do you have? What, uh, what's the level of the role that you want? What's the, ideally, what's the functional title that you're looking for? What's the industry that you like to specialize in? These are things that effectively, and you know, I'm talking about your elevator pitch, or however you want to phrase it. If you meet somebody in an elevator in the grocery store, or even in, during an interview, you're inevitably going to be asked that question, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to have that 30 second pitch available so that you can make that impression. And like, even if you left after a minute interview, the interviewer is going to know what your brand is and who mm -hmm. you are. And the second thing, uh, this is, you know, old school advice is that, um, and Ringo and I bring this up frequently is, you know, the metaphor of job search is like dating. And if you don't keep that dating mindset uh, in the back of your brain, you are going to make very simple uh, mistakes. We've had hiring managers tell us, I mean, I, I kid you not, candidates show up, they don't dress up, they don't shower, they talk negatively about their exes, their quote unquote exes. And this is going to be basically, you know, you're talking, you're throwing your managers or your ex-employer, your former employers under the bus. Um, and, and these are all the things that in general, you wouldn't do on a first or second date. Mm. And you got and and when you have your first interview or second or even your fourth interview with an employer, keep that in mind, because it, would you say or do these things on a date? And if you wouldn't, then don't do it in an interview. So. I love that. Yeah, because people don't want to hear negativity. Right. They want to know, like, what do you want? And then also figuring out how you can help the company. So keep all your drama out. Dating exactly. Don't air the dirty laundry. Right. And if you haven't <laughs> dated for 15 years, that's just, <laughs> no, no, like, just don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So don't bring. And then also, what would you say about how they show up? So you both know that I do a lot of coaching on presentations and body language. Like, what are you seeing with candidates as they're actually communicating that works? Like, what should they keep doing? One thing I like in the way you communicate is you use your hands. Mm -hmm. And I think just moving around, I, I don't know if you're standing up, but it, it looks am. like you're standing up and I think <laughs> you convey more energy when you're standing up. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can stand up during the interview, that'd be great. And just using your hands gives it, it's a much more three-dimensional experience versus a flat experience. Right. So, um, yes. Yeah. Woo! Also, look into the camera and, and raise the, the, your laptop or your camera or whatever, you know, put, if you have to, you know, create a stack of books and put your laptop on top of it. But, you know, have your camera at eye level mm -hmm. and look into the camera. I know it's, it sounds strange, but if you do this enough, then you will uh, engage the, the person on the other side uh, and, and the, because they're looking at you. Exactly. And, um, and then, you know, the other thing is uh, be in a well-lit space. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a well-lit space, you know, have some external lighting on you as well, because the lighting makes a big difference. Nobody wants to look at anybody that's in the shadow. Right. And I can see your eyes or your face or your smile. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are just really quick tips there. I, I, these are things that um, will help engage, uh, keep you engaged as a, as a candidate and um, while you're interviewing. So there you go. Well, that is... <laughs> <laughs> that's the cowbell more idea cowbell. <laughs> we all need more I cowbell that. i love that Thanks. but that really is the cowbell idea it's like change your mindset have a resume that pops and that's not outdated make sure that you are excited about yourself because if you're not excited about yourself no one else is going to be stand and i love ringa that you said so we can see your hands because i always coach people because if we can't see your hands, we don't trust you. We don't know what you're doing underneath. If you're your phone, <laughs> what are you doing? Your phone, whatever. But I stand because you do have better energy. So really like how you're saying things also makes a big difference. And then Jim's point, make sure it's like you're taking a photo. Make sure your, your, your face is framed in, the, you know, in, your, in your computer. And then make sure we can see you. So eye contact is key. And you have to really be excited about yourself. So thank you so much for your ideas because- Thank 2020 you. is not over. 
2020 can still be awesome because there are jobs out there. Yes. And absolutely. so people can find more researches, more research for HR nasty. Is that what it's yes, called? Yes. Okay. Yes. HR, you wanted to make sure I said that right. <laughs> and then your show nine to five, which is awesome. It gives you tools on what you can do to be more effective. Is there any place else they could find you or closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, eventually we'll be publishing our, our content on uh, LinkedIn, our LinkedIn profiles as well. But for now, again, just look us up on Instagram or on YouTube. It's nine TWO and then uh, the number five. And uh, we'll be uh, continuing to uh, you know, produce more uh, content to help you as a candidate and as a professional. So. Good. Well, thank you so much for making people better and giving them more opportunities. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Allison. It was really fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, take care.